Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be covering our part two for our barter series. And we're going to be upgrading our improved Ephiria frigate to a Galeas, but we're also going to cover how to upgrade it to a Caravo for those that are focusing on bartering. And then we're going to jump into how to prepare for a Carrick. And then also I want to cover the items that I discovered along the way during bartering that helped me improve my silver output. So with that said, let's dive in. So before we proceed, I just wanted to show the methods on how to load your items to the ship. So kind of like a recap for the beginner. So one way is by going to the wharf manager with your ship outside. So you have to take it outside if it's checked in. You hit this um, load cargo. You choose the material that you're trying to load. So you could either, you know, put in your materials like this over here and then like load in the materials that you need. So for example, the flax fabric. And then you could also put those like items into your inventory if you choose to do so. So like if you're selling items like for example, you wanted to sell three of these um, statues, um, statues tiers. So just click them over and then you could exit. And the wharf managers have shops. So you could go ahead and directly sell those ones. So those are like kind of like the methods on loading and unloading. So the next thing is by accessing your central market via the NPC or your maid. And what you do is you find the item that you would need. So for example, this flax fabric. And it would load into your inventory. You go back to the wharf manager. Then you could also do the same method that we just did by loading that much to that to your ship. And the other thing is like if your ship is out, You can go to your ship and mount it, press P, and you could right click and transfer those items to your ship. And you can also withdraw anything that are not barter items back to your inventory. Another recap that I wanted to do is the setting. So if you go to your menu and you hit F10 or the setting, and you go to settings, which is number one. Type in barter. And you would get this barter information. Set your call ship and barter information to the buttons that are most accessible to you. So for example, my mouse has two extra buttons. I put a call ship for one and barter info for two. So this one, what it would do is like if you fall into the water or your ship desyncs and it drops you, you could just click that button and it brings you onto your ship. And you, if you click it again, it would let you, you know, mount the ship right away. So it's fairly, fairly useful when you're like, for, um, for example, like Vel, if you have to dive in and then like once you go up, will just like instantly go back to your ship and then the barter information is if you press the mouse function too then you get the barter information right away and you can click it again to close it so also for the recap on how to barter like the actual barter is you go to the island with your ship and when you have your items loaded into your ship you click on anchor barter and as you can see here it shows how much you have in possession which is in your ship not on your character and then you hit continuous exchange to the maximum and that exchange happens and it gets loaded into your ship so let's start by clicking on our improved Ephiria frigate and going to the upgrade ship to review the materials that are needed for upgrading our ship. So last time we did buy the old pro, the plating cannon and the sail from Filiberto Falasi. 
And just to recap where he is, when you see Calpheon, just go to northwest and it will be here, this dock over here. And it would be this NPC named Filiberto Falassi. So he's the goblin that sells the contracts, the licenses and all. And you could buy these items off of him. So let's do a recap on the gears. So these are the ones that I bought over at Filiberto Falassi and it requires 55 verdant blackstones each to upgrade. So I already made progress on some of these ones because I don't want to bog down the video of you know me showing all of the T1 trades. And to recap where I got those T1 materials and exchange it for the verdant stones, I went over to the seven islands um, specifically. So I was just rotating off of these ones up until I got you know enough T1s to exchange for the vouchers and we would do that a little bit later at Patelia Island. So I got it from um, Luivano Island, the FD Rune, the Bayerua, Parotama, Mariveno, Eveto, and Dutch. And sometimes I do venture here at the west side, but not much. And over here at Ilya Island is where I stored all of those T1s. And at the current state, I've already did 60 trades and 60 upgrades. So I have the plus eight for the old plating, plus six for the prow, plus two for the cannons, and I have four here at the at my inventory. And let me just do a recap on how to enhance these ones. So you call up your black spirit. You load in your gear. And this is always 100%. The only thing that happens is that it breaks the durability or reduces it by 10. And that's why like you would need a couple of these ones, you know, you have to go back to Aferia to buy some and use those to repair these items. Unless you're willing to use memory fragments, which I highly don't recommend, like, you know, but it's up to you. So the next one we're going to tackle is these items that you got from Ravinia's quest at Crow's Nest. So you would get 50 of each of these ones if you did complete the seven day quest. And that is a big help. But as for me, I don't have that, you know, because like it was account wide and I'm not able to do it again. I had to farm for these materials, which I was able to do within a week and a half. But for newer players, I think that, you know, like three weeks or more is required because you don't have like, you know, the tools that are needed to get these ones or even the fundings. So for the graphite ingot for upgrade, you need zinc ingots and you need 10,000 of these ones. So if you did the quest, then you just need half. And that applies for both of these ones too. So for the timber for upgrade, you need the red tree lumps and the old tree barks. And for the adhesive, you need the white setter sap, the acacia sap, and the elder tree saps. One thing too that you would need are the sea monster ooze that we would be getting from the sea monsters. And I will be showing you where to get them right now. So this is what a sea monster looked like. And we are near Kron's Island. It's just above here. And it's on the left side of Ilya. Majority of the monsters that you would want to get is around here so that you could just go back to Ilya to refill and restore your rations, which is very essential. And we're going to be discussing this in detail, um, you know, in a little bit and your cannonballs. So at this rate, you're limited to a very, very few amounts of cannonballs and you would need a lot of these ones to kill the sea monsters. So you would need to go back to the wharf to refill most of the time. And as you progress, as you increase your you know, capacity and the grade of your ship, then you would need you know less and less time to refill and go back to the islands. And one thing to note too, when you are going and hunting for these sea monsters or driving your ships manually, 
If you focus your attention over here on the bottom side, you would see that there's a sea current and the winds. So you can see here like the direction of the wind and the direction of the currents. So if you are against the arrow, so let's say like I put it over here, you can see that I'm totally against it if I go this direction. And if I have my sails unfolded, then my speed would be greatly affected. But like for example, this one I'm facing towards the current, then my speed would increase as I go. So it's, it's really trying to find the balance between the two and you would notice like this one, this is your boat speed. So if it goes up, then it means that you're going the right you know, path or you're actually nav navigating it correctly. But if not, then it means that you have to kind of shift your boat from left to right trying to find you know, the best path. And that is very, very important when you're going to Margoria because at this one, you can't auto path. And you know, like there's a certain amount of, you know, resistance over here and it goes to specific parts. And we will be discussing that on a later video. For the zinc ingots, you could go to the market and buy them off at around 29 to 30,000. And I think the lowest it has been is like 23,000. But like, I have a note that I've been accumulating the zinc ingot for the longest time now. And it is at Omar Lava Cave. And I have about like, you know, over 10,000 now, I believe. And it stores here in Altunova, as you can see. And I have like 30,000 of that one. And that is what my current alt is processing right now. And that is the one that I'm going to be using for that 10,000 zinc ingots. And for the saps, just a recap, you could get them from Iris Canyon for the elder tree. Gorgorok belt for another elder tree. Stonetail Wasteland for the Acacia Sap. Medaya Northern Highlands for the White Sitter. And Eldrick Shrine for the other White Sitter Sap. But as for me, I just went directly to the market and got these saps by pre-orders. It took me about a week and a half to fulfill all of these ones. The hardest one to get was the Acacia Sap and the White Setter Sap. The Acacia Sap has 135,000 pre-orders and you could still get a fair amount if you just like leave a thousand every day. For the White Setter, it's kind of more easier because it has only 15,000 and you could also leave a thousand. And for the Elder Tree, this one gets fulfilled fast. I got this about like three days and also can be pre-ordered like a thousand pieces per pre-order. For the Timper for upgrade, it's fairly easy, but it's just kind of pricey because the old tree bark is at 22,500 and I bought this at max price for mine. It just took me a few minutes to get all of these ones. And for the red tree lump, um, this one kind of goes out of stock, but like I was um, able to get this around um, I think around two days and that cost me around like just 19 million which is good so the total cost of the materials is 826 million if you're gonna buy it all from the market but if you want to kind of reduce the cost then you can go out there from the map get the nodes and invest in workers so that you could you know slowly trickle down like you know all of those materials to your storage and you know, reduce the cost and you could also go out in the map to gather from um, you know, like those nodes for the saps, you know, with the fluid disc extractor and the lumber axe for the red tree lump and old tree bark. But, you know, for newer players that doesn't have much experience on getting these ones, then, you know, like you have to do like a little bit more research on where is the best rotation for this one. And honestly, like I didn't do that. So um, I can't really advise much on that part as it was more efficient for me to you know keep on like, you know grinding and bartering and use that money to do on pre-orders instead of going out to like, you know 
those nodes to gather it myself. Okay, now that we have reviewed all of the items that we need for our improved frigate to be upgraded to Galeas, let's go ahead and commit to them right now and upgrade it. So I'm gonna start off by making sure that like these ones are converted into the vouchers for the Verdant Stones. So we already made 63. So that gives us about 157 left. So just a reminder that you cannot exchange your level one to the vouchers if you are overweight. So we're gonna exchange all of the T1s that we currently have up until we have all of the crow vouchers that we need, then we're gonna head out to crow's nest. So we are now heading to crow's nest and we're going to be trading the ones that we traded for the T1s, which is the Crow Merchant's Guild Barter Voucher or the CM Vouchers. So what we're going to be doing is exchanging these for the Verdant Stones. So as a reminder, you need 55 for each. And the reason why I have like another row here, like two rows to be exact, is because I'm going to be using these ones to repair this. As you can see, if you enhance it by you no know, two plus eight, it loses you know 10 durability per click and it's now at 20 durability so i'm gonna be using um some artisan memories that i got from the events to repair these ones so it's gonna be much easier Okay, now that we're back at Crow's Nest and we're here at Ravinia, so we just go talk to her and do the exchange. And you can see it's one voucher for one Verdant Stone. So we just click on that one. We're gonna exchange all of the ones that we have. We have 137. Click OK. OK. There we have it. We have our stones for the upgrades. And Let's head out to Filiberto Palasi to upgrade these ones just to be sure that, you know, we don't run out of the old gear to repair these ones. Okay, now that we have masterfully <laughs> um, barked our Carrick, this is what you call a Carrick parallel parking. <laughs> I don't know how I was, able, I was able to do it, but I think it bugged out. But what you would do, like I would say, like just to make it a habit, go to your wharf manager and always do the buy supplies first, followed by checking it in and hitting the repairs. And it will show you the repairs. It's kind of cheap. And then the repair damage, if there's any damage to your ship, and then go exit out, go to repair and repair your ship. This is for the gear itself, not the actual durability so that like you know when you go out there it would always be full and your gear will always be at 100 durability also touching on the topic of repairing wharf managers can do recover max durability so that when you need to recover these ones then you will be able to so just to show you this one i just want to make sure that um you know like the stars understand like the reason why i want to include artisan's memory for this one is because like you know majority of the times you get this free and it's times five if you only do it once you would see that it only repaired 10. so if you have a event artisan memory handy then it would be 40. so you just need two to repair with the artisans or you would need eight gears which is will be kind of pricey and by pricey i mean that it's gonna be for this one you would like yeah because like you would need 10 gears to be exact because from 1 to 8 and then 9 to 10 this would be 40 million to repair 30 million this would be 35 and 35 so just keep that in mind 
And now that we are still with um, Filiberto Falasi, just make sure that if you do have the money, go ahead and buy the ship upgrade permit of the ship that you are trying to um, upgrade to. So for me, it's going to be the Eferia Galeas. And if you are going for the Eferia Caraval, um, you choose this one. So it's much cheaper. Um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get this one. So we don't have to worry because we need to go back to Villa to do the um, the graphite, the adhesive, and the timber for upgrades. There we go. Okay, let's get these to 10. And just a reminder that the process would be the same throughout. The only difference is the stones consumed, the durability, and the repairs that you need to do. So let's go. And to repair again, just click on the item and then put in the ingredient for repair. I'm using an artisan memory from the events and just recover once to give you a 50. So if you don't do this one, it's just gonna be 10. So it's kind of expensive. So if you have artisans laying around, then like this is a worth, um, you know, worth item to use it on. So there we got like, just remember, don't click that one yet. So we got, cause like that's 30 and then like the repair is 40 and we still need to upgrade this by two. So that would land us at 50 exactly where we want it to be. So just keep that in mind. And there we have it. So just make sure that you hit the repair inventory to have them all at 100 durability. Go back to your wharf manager, check in your current boat that you are using, um, and then upgrade ship for our improved ship. So you can see here that we have the gears now. We have the plus 10, old prow. I was like joking on the first one, it's old pro. <laughs> And we have the plating, we have the cannon, we have the wind sail, and we have the permit that we bought. And then this one is, we're, I'm gonna cover it in a little bit, but the next one that we need to focus on are these three. So we got the materials that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead to my storage and we're gonna process this with the monster ooze. So we would have the hundred of them. Okay, so we're gonna load this one to our inventory. This is kind of heavy, so I might not be able to put in all of them. Let's see, how much can I put? My current weight is uh, 1.8 for my alt sailor. So we're at like just 5,000 for the max now. So let's go ahead and combine that with the sea monsters. So the next one that we are going to get is our adhesives, which is going to be for the Elder Tree Sab, the Acacia, and the White Setter. That took quite a while, but we have now our graphite ingots and adhesive. So the next one we're going to do is the timber. So we need the old tree bark and the red tree lumps. Okay, due to inventory limit again, I am limited to 7,000 each. And this one is not heating, but chopping. And there we go. So finally, we are now finished with the graphite, with the timber and adhesive. And we bought the permit so now let's focus on the island tree coated plywood. So this comes from bartering. One thing to look out for when you're bartering is these island tree coated plywood or the rock salt ingots. So for this one, I'm showing on your screen, 
these are the level two items that are needed to trade for these. So this particular instance is the Narvo C Cucumber. And it gives you a hundred of these ones. This is one part of the items that you need to upgrade your Galeas. And like the rock salt ingot is for the caravel. So like just make sure to look out for these ones. And if it does go up, like yeah, like just make sure that you have at least like one of these the level two on your screen because um, it only requires one to trade to a hundred. And the final items on the list is the timber square, the tie dyed standardized one, the cobalt ingot, and the moon scale plywood. These are fairly easy to get through the Oculia quest. This one and this one. And this one, you could get it from the Crow Coin Shop. Before you venture out to Lima Island or to Oculus Eye, just pause for a while, open the barter information, and go to barter refresh. I want to introduce you to the ship material refresh. We didn't do this at part one because we didn't need any material yet for this one on that part. But for here, it allows you to get the Galeas Caravel and also the Karak Mets to like you know to accumulate and eventually you know use that for the future upgrade so the primary purpose of doing you know our bar refresh on the part one is to get your barter count up and then afterwards that one is you know unlocking the coins at 70 trades and then unlocking the trade um the rock salt ingot and the island tree coated plywood at netnume island but for now since we need the cobalt ingot and we need the plywood and the tie dyed. Let's explore this one. So as you can see, after I did the refresh on that one, it consumed 40. The next one would be 50. And you can see here the first one it, at Ball Beach Island. It gives you the moon scale plywood, like just enough for the one that you need. The problem is at this point when you're beginning, you might not have the Azure quartz. So for this one, for this one to work, I would suggest that you go on and try to trade from T1 to T5 and accumulate the mats at least like, you know, two a piece. And as you can see here, like, you know, like you can just like have like the T1s at like a minimum because you only need a few and then accumulate your T2s so you could exchange for that plywood and rock salt and then accumulate, you know, like three, five up until like the level five, um, just a few, like, you know, two, two a piece. So the way you do that is you go to Ilya Island and you get these storage houses. So you would have enough storage for this island. The reason why we want Ilya Island to be like our main source, like our, our main base for operations is because it's nearest to almost everything. So all of the, like, you know, on the normal trades, all of the T2s are here, all of the T1s are here. Majority of the T5 surrounds it, like, and then like just jumps over here. And then for the material barters, everything is near here. As you can see, it's so much accessible. And then the other ones that you need, you know, like these other islands are not even populated, as you can see. So it really depends on your need. And then you can also get the rock salt ingots from here, as well as the island tree coated plywood. So this is something that you could explore as long as you have the materials. But like, you know, you could just put it off on, you know, a future one up until you have enough materials to trade in because like it does consume a lot of parley and at the same time it would take you another four hours to cool down so going back to the topic the ones that we were trying to get is the moon scale plywood our tie dyed unfortunately this one gives you know like just two trades for a level four one to one and we have one exchange for the cobalt ingot. So you could do this or just directly buy it for 300 coins. And then some of the things that you need to take when doing this one, which we're gonna be covering on the next video, is like the orange items, as you can see. 
like these are the very important ones but as of now you don't need them but if you do have like the materials and all then you're willing to lose some money for those materials then you can go ahead and do that the other method that you could do is also go to Okila's Eye and there are some specific quests that you could take over here but as beginners um, I don't recommend it yet because your boat is not as fast to go through Margoria and also like the materials that you would need here forces you to kind of go to sea monster habitats for the Candidum the nine shark and the black crust now you don't have to complete those ones but at your current state it's gonna take a while to complete this one and for me it's kind of a waste of time because first it doesn't add to your barter count and you need 5111 for them to appear normally like the brilliant materials or 3000 um, for like the material refresh so like it's really up to you for that one but like as beginners if you only have a improved ship I don't recommend going over and doing those quests yet but we would cover those dailies on the next video so just to go over all of the things that we just mentioned and also to add a little bit of route to your day-to-day um, what I normally do is I do a normal barter for each and every day and I get to T1 to T5 stored at least two and then I gradually increase it depending on the storage that I have. And then after that one, the last barter that you do for the day, if possible, is a material refresh and you try to get all of the materials that you need for the Galeas upgrade. So for example, the island tree coated plywood or for the rock salt ingot and you know the moon scale plywood like this is just you just need one for these ones so it's really good it's just one trade and then also for the tie dyed and in about like you know three days or so or more depending on your schedule then you would have all of the materials that you would need to upgrade so now we have collected all of the things that we would need let's just review what is the benefit of upgrading an uh, improved ship to Aglia. So improved ships doesn't have any benefits outside of the um, captain cannons, which are the side cannons that you could fire with the left and right mouse button. But for the Galeas, you would see that it has 200,000 more rations. So it means that you could go like, you know, more and like more distance on your ship. So especially for when you're going out to Margoria, then you'll have a hard time like, you know, maintaining your rations if you're doing you know the axle or the breezy sail and then the inventory it has like you know three more um it doesn't really matter much but like when you're starting to trade t5s since they don't stack like these kind of matter and then for the weight you get like this is the most important thing is you get four thousand more so it means that you know you could do now twice what you were doing before so before you could only do like you know three or four trades in one route for this one you could do twice that so this is one of the like the best benefits and um in addition to that one you are able to equip the blue gear for these ones which we're gonna tackle next and the last one is the cabin quantity it means that you can hire two more sailors it means that you could have more speed and they level up much faster when like, you know, there are more sailors in your boat. And we now come to the part where we're gonna be upgrading. We're ready to upgrade. All of our gears are fully repaired. We got all the materials and let's go. So our Bartali sailboat graduated to a frigate into an improved frigate and now it's an inferior Galeas so we just need one more step to add to you know like to be able to have like our next ship which is like the Eagle Pearl 
And I'm kind of excited at this point. So, you need now for this one is the Ephiria Galeas Blue Gear. So, this one is available at Port Ephiria. We're going to go over there um, in a bit. So, you need all four of those ones. And you can find these gears in Port Ephiria. But you have to purchase um, Port Ephiria 1-4, second floor. And it requires 11 contribution points so make sure to save up on that one in order to have access to this ship's part workshop and the ones with the blue outlines are the Eferia Caraval and Galeas gear and you will be able to see all of the materials that are needed here now this is gonna be you know like a very long process and I will explain why First thing to do, and first off, is purchase all of these ones. So as I mentioned before, you need 11 contribution points, and upgrading this one takes time. So it's not noticeable, like it's not really noticeable because like once you click, you can like leave it, and it would upgrade on its own. As you can see here, it's still processing, but you have to do that um, three times. So that's gonna take a little while. And when this one completes, you can go to manage crafting and I'm just going to pick another worker so you don't get confused on the mats that I currently have. Um, you would see these ones at the bottom are the materials that are needed to craft your gear. Now, these might not be foreign to you because we've discussed this on the last video and also they touch up on the material barter refresh. And the way to obtain them is on the actual item. So. One example is over here, the Rudy Manganese Nodule, and there's a how to obtain box in the middle. You could see that it can be traded for a level four, which is from the material barter refresh. And then for the Oculus Eye, um, this one you can do like the daily quest with the Otter. We've covered that last time too, but we'll cover that in a little bit. And um, also defeating um, sea monsters, uh, there's a possibility for it to drop. So this is the example of the trade for the level 4 for the Rudy Manganese. So all you have to do is click on this one and it would auto path you to there. And when you uh, press map like the M, you will be directed over here, like you know where the island is. So if the item on the one that you're trying to build is like does have the exchange, then it means that it is present in the material barter refresh. And as you can see, all of these ones are. Um, that's why like, I do recommend like, you know, you just continually do the barter refresh every day so that you could slowly accumulate these ones. So for this section, we're going to talk about the things that you need to do to build towards a carrot. So this would take time and it would require a lot of like dailies for you to do. And as well as, you know, trying to find like, you know, the best way to get all of those mats ready. So we might have touched on the items that I'm about to discuss earlier, but this is just to recap and consolidate all of those information. So the first thing that you would do once you get the Galeas or the Caravel is go to Filiberto Falasi and buy the gear appropriate to your ship. So if you have a Caravel, do get the Caravel. If you have the Galeas, then go to the Galeas ones. So once you have all of them, you go to your Galeas and equip all of these ones so you get the stats that are available for these ones so from base you can see like these offer great weight so this 100 200 and 100 and the cannon gives extra damage that would help you greatly on your sea monster dailies and the next step is always going to your wharf manager making sure that your ship is repaired and loaded with rations so that like when you go out you have the max like you know the max cannonballs the max rations so you don't have to travel back because like I've done that multiple times before where I didn't check my um, status for my ship and I had to, you know, travel back and where I was already halfway out to Markoria. The next step is making sure that you do the, the material barter refresh at least once a day. So as you can see, I finished most of it on this run 
so I was able to get the um, pirates artifacts, the seaweeds, um, the um, tie-dyes, like all of the ones that are needed, like these ones, the um, deep tides. So this is very important. Also get the Cox part um, extermination seals because 200 of these is equals to the legacy one, which is the hardest to get, like the artifact combat. And this one too, the moon vein flax fabric. You need 210 of these ones, like, you know, at least for the Glias. So make sure that you get these ones because like they give a good amount of value when you trade. Like for example, this one, this gave me 13. The next thing too is doing the dailies. So you could do the dailies with, you know, um, three cities. So one is Port Eferia, one is Vela, and one is Oculus Eye. And let's start with Port Eferia with Dias, which is the Imperial Fishing Delivery. So um, he has three quests, like the start, Stay Sharp, Outlaws of the Ocean, and a treasure swimming in the ocean. So this one, um, he asks you to kill the hungry sea monsters, whereas like it's very easy for your Galeas now because of the additional damage. And like this one is fairly easy because like they're they're in front of Ilya Island. So those are the um, stalkers. So if we accept that one, and you can see it's in the same area. And then the sea stalkers too are here in the sea of silence. There's a lot of them over here. So it's very, very, very easy. The next one is the outlaws of the oceans. So this one, he is asking for you to kill a Goldmond large battleship. You don't need this actually. Like um, you would have to venture out around this area in order to find them. So the rewards is not like, you know, not really good for you to venture out over there, um, you know, just solely for that. So if you want to skip it because it doesn't give you any character mats, like that's fine. The next one is the Stay Sharp. So this one also asks you to find the Goldmond small battleship. This is fairly easy. When you're doing sea monster quests, like, you know, killing Margoria sea monsters, you could go over here in this area and there is a lot of them. So you like, this is very fairly easy to do. And it also gives you, you know, the sailing XP. So it's very near Ethereum. So I believe like that this one is worth it. So our next one is at Vela. And you can see the first one over here is Ravinia. When you take her quest, so like, She's going to give three. So what I recommend is always take the Tinbera Island because this gives you like the most um, sailing XP and also the most coins. And it's fairly easy. It's just a turnover quest. But the problem with this one is it needs to be turned over within 24 minutes. So just keep that in mind. And you have to travel here and give it to the NPC, which I covered earlier. So the next one is Quirks. So you can ignore the Nutritious Mackerel because this is a fishing quest for 50 CP. So you would want to go to the Wanted Ocean Stalker. And you have to kill the Ocean Stalkers under Ilya Island. Um, it's the nearest one and it gives you the Sailing XP and the 300 CP and this is the origin of wind which reloads eight cannonballs onto your ship so I'll discuss that in a bit and then the looming threats from the ocean so this one is also trying like you know having you find the Goldmond large battleships so this one is not really needed um, if you do go venture out there then like you know you could go ahead and accept that one and the last one is the Ocean Predators. So this one is for the Goldman small ship. So it's the same as the one that I showed in Port Eferia. So you could go over there to the left side and hunt them here. The next one would be in this inn. So this is the Villa Inn. So you go over here and talk to Mia, the rookie barter. 
and she would give you these quests. So I recommend going to Baremi because this is the nearest one. And it gives you 200 CP and sailing XP. You chat with her to receive your items. And then you would deliver that over here. So you would have to talk to the barter NPC and turn over the item. The good thing about this one is it doesn't have a time limit, so you can do it anytime. The next one is Porks. So you go here, get the hungry sea creatures, and this one asks you to kill hungry Hecarus and ocean stalkers, so any in combination, and gives you the CP and this one. And the Cox Scouts in disguise, this is the Cox Pirates in the islands. So you have to kill them with your um, ship and gives the same thing. And this one you could ignore like how to recover the sailors because you would need um, dried pearl oysters, which is very like, you know, kind of like a different topic on its own. So we can skip this one. The next one is in Oculus Eye and these are fairly easy to do. And there's also an alternate version that makes it easier for you know the beginners to do so like I'm gonna show that in a little bit the first thing that you need to get is from Ravical the daily Ravical quest this is fairly easy um, fairly easy because you only need three barters and it gives you the Okila coins where you need to have 150 sailing XP and 300 CP so what you would get from these ones are you know for the minor cannon for the bright roof piece and this one for the upgraded plating, which is the pure pearl crystal. The next one after that one, once you complete the three barters, is go to this unnamed soldier, and he would give you a quest where you need to do 10 trades, and that would give you the enhanced island tree coated plywood, or the Cox Pirate Artifact Parley Expert and also a coin, sailing XP, and 400 CP. So this is one good, like, you know, good way of increasing your CP. So the next one is talking to this soldier, so he doesn't have a name. Go to the quest, and this one, the R Guild is not a charity group. So what you do on this one is go over to the bottom part of Okila, or south part, and there's two indicator where you could kill the young sea monsters. These are very easy to do. And the next one is the do you have what it takes? And this one asks you to kill the Hecarus. And this can be done on the east side and the west side. So I'll show you in a little bit. So this one gives you the combat. So just three of these. And also the Okila coins, sailing, and the CP. And then the other one. The win-win situation is for the ocean stalkers. So just to note that these cannot be the hungry ones. So it has to be the ones from Margoria. So this gives you the deep tide um, died standard uh, timber square and gives you the kill coins and XP and also the CP. So just to show you how I do it, I just go directly to the right side for the Hecru habitat and then to the sea monster because of the current, it goes from right to left. And then we could go back to Okila to claim the um, rewards and then get the second chain of, of quest. Once you arrive at one of the indicators and uh, you would see them with a quest objective tag on top of them. So we just go ahead and attack them. So for your Galeas or your Caraval, it would take time because of um, the cannons having like, you know, lower damage. So expect to be here for a couple of minutes. And also, as you can see on that one, if they do like a swim back animation dive or like, you know, the resurfing one, um, it does have like an iframe. So keep that in mind. And they also drop Verdant Blackstones. Um, you know, for future upgrades that you would be doing. So now we're going to the Ocean Stalkers. So it's fairly easy. Just point your ship towards west. And if you see the islands, then you're on the right path. You're not going too far to Mogoria. 
And on the left side, you can see that that's Oculus Eye. And if you see the uh, medium Goldmon ship, then you're on the right path. You just have to go more to the west. And the Oculus Eye is still in view, so we're in the right track. And once you see these small ones, then you're good. And you just head out to the ones with the quest objective on top, which is the big ones. And after that, just breezy sail towards Oculus Eye again. And once you are back at the Oculus Eye, just head over back to that unnamed soldier. And you get the deep tide dyed standard timber square. And you get the deep timber square and the Cox Parts Artifact Combat, the red one, and the Tide Dyed Standardized Timber Square, the normal one. So once you complete that one, it opens up the next quest at Ravigo. So if you're not confident and you think that, you know, it would take too much time for you, then you could do the Young quest. So the Young one gives you like these quests that gives you like just half of what you can get on the normal one. And if you see here, the main one gives you full and more sailing XP. So it's up to you what you want to take. And I would recommend like if you have a guildie that has a character that does daily, then do it with them. Or if you have people with the Galeas or um, another caravel, then you could do or trio it in a party. So for the Candidum Hunter, you would get the Moon Scale Plywood and the same thing with the others, CP, Sailing, and Okil Coin. The Nine Shark Hunter for killing the Nine Sharks. This would give you the Moon Vein Flax Fabric. And for the Black Rust, it would give you the Tear of the Ocean. So for me, this is the most important quest that you need to take because you need 42 of these to get your carrot. So it's 42 for the advance, for the volante, the valor, and the only difference is you need 50 of these ones for the balance. Now that we have all the quests, remember to always make it a habit to repair, repair any damages, take it out again and buy supplies. So you would have full cannons and full rations. Okay guys, so before we head out to Margorgia's Sea for the quest, I just want to say that this is kind of going to get long. And it normally takes, you know, even for a um, Carrick, um, about like, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, depending if I do active um, breezy sails or not. And also, like, you know, killing the sea monster would depend upon your cannon. So currently, the advanced that I'm using have blue cannon, so it's going to be a lot easier. But like if you would want to skip on, you know, the parts, I'll provide a summary once we get back and finish the quest. So, you know, but like if you do want to go ahead and watch, you know, the whole process of getting the Candidum, the Nine Shark and then the Black Crust, then like, you know, feel free to um, stay and go over the video. If not, then like you could skip on my put it on the timestamp and let's go. And now we're gonna head out to the Candidum Lair. And what you will need now here is a compass. So these ones can be bought again, like just a reminder at the market. Um, sometimes they're out of stock. If they are, you can buy it for 400 coins at the Crow Point shop at Lema Island. Now that we're going up towards this um, sea monster habitat, I want to show you one technique to find these markers much easier. So like when you start, you won't see these markers at all. Like, they would just be like, you know, you would just see a full blank of like blue sea. 
and there's nothing there. So the way that you would be able to find this one is this. Go to your barter info and then go to the orange grades. These would normally have all of the items that you would need to trade for those ones. And then you click this one, the sticker UI. This would separate this window from your game window. And you would press, you know, you would click outside and M again. And you would click this one, like this find mark. And it would bring you there. It would center it in the map. So once you are near the area, you could just zoom in and try to find it, you know, visually where the you know, ship is. You know, same with the other ones. It would just go there, but it won't set a path to auto path because you can't auto path here at Magoria. So this is really, like, you know, a very nice thing to know when you're trying to find these ones and getting knowledge from them. And there is a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 routes that you could find. I call them routes, but they're actually just like, you know, barter, like they're equivalent to the barter islands, but at Magoria. And we're not going to go over those ones yet. We're going to be reserving that for the next video so that, you know, when we have the Karak or, you know, at least the blue gear for our ship, then we would have enough um, space and weight to carry the items to trade on these islands. One thing to note, it's very nice to have the continuous use of Breezy Sail when you are here so that, you know, you can do something else. You could just like go over to your map, um, point it in a direction of the sea monster habitat or like the first ship and leave for a while. Just don't leave for too long or you would end up, you know, over here <laughs> on the snow region. Okay, one thing to note too, that there are also young Candidums over here. So just make sure that you're killing the correct one. It could be seen on the top, the indicator, which ones are them. And normally the ones that are, and the ones that you need is very visible. As you can see, like it's much, much bigger than the young ones. And they're coded in blue highlight because like they're part of your objective. So the first one that we encountered is not even here yet. And it's directly south of like our first marker and you could find them around this area. So now that we've defeated the Candidum, we're going to go over to the Nine Sharks. And it's going to be over here on the left. This is visible regardless if you have the markers or not and also this one, and also for the black rusts. Just to note too that they're in this area, so you might be able to find one that is near here on the edge. And when I'm doing my bartering, I usually find them over here in between these two ships. Once you spot a small nine shark like this one, it means that there's one big one like nearby, so keep an eye out. And there you go, we have spotted one. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate that nine shark. So just to note again, like if you're doing the young, you, ha you just have to do the small ones and not these big ones. But for the ones that we accepted, we got the um, bigger ones with the uh, times two rewards. So we're going for these bigger sea monsters. And just to note too, that they have a chance to drop a 100 million item for the guild funds and if you do then you know you could tell your GM to <laughs> make sure you have a t10 payout okay so we are done with the nine shark we're now gonna head over to south of the Margoria sea now that we are here outside the sea and there's going to be a longer travel to the Black Rust, I want to go over the reload of the ration and cannonball. 
Since the travel is long going to the Black Cross, I want to use this time to go over reloading your rations and your cannonballs while outside. So I have these meals, this special Balenos meals, and you could purchase or create once on your own. And it supplies 22,000 rations per item. So as you can see here, we have a total of 1,390,000 rations and we have 713 left. So you just click on this emergency supply and then click on the available meal, use it, and it refills your rations. Same thing with the cannonball. If you click on this one, it would show you the um, item. So this is the breezy crystals that we've been getting through the quest and then use them and it refills your cannonballs. So this is very useful when you're at the Galeas or Caraval where you only have 300 cannonballs and for the Galeas you have 600. So having those ones is very helpful. You could buy the meals at the market. And then for the cannonballs, there's an item called Origins of the Wind. This is the one that you could purchase. For the Breezy, you can buy it at the Wharf Managers. But like, you know, it's easier to get this one if you do have a maid. Um, and it refills eight cannonballs instead of just two. So if you have the compass, you can see that it's very easy to see where you're going. And you can just head towards these indicators and a black crust would be there. Unless, like, you know, if another ship has already gotten first there and killed it. Another fun fact, while we're going over to the black crust, if you ever encounter a ghost pirate ship, this one, the Morgoria Phantom Ship, it counts as a sea monster. So if you're taking, like, the five ones, if you kill one, then that's a bonus like that's the ecsc monster that you could kill so that is the young black crust and this is the bigger one so once you've killed the black crust we are now gonna head back to okila's eye and now we're back at Oculus Eye. So what we do now is go to Rapical and talk to this guy so we could get our tears and coins and then our moon vein plaques fabric and then our moon scale plywood. So So that completes the daily quest for Okila. And the only thing you need now, like I mean like for that part, for the sea monsters and the barters, the only thing left now is like this one from the otter and we covered this also last time. And all you need to do is talk to this guy and turn over um, the iridescent corals and corals. And I currently have my alt as my main um, otter. Um, translator <laughs> so um, I, I so we would get the seaweed stock and the coin and then exchange for the Rudy manganese snow jewel and I covered all, like both of these acquisitions um, on the last video and if you want to recap it's just basically going over here here and here around here and you would get the iridescent corals by diving and um, gathering the colorful corals. And like also you'll get like the normal coral ones. So it's been a long video and I just wanted to provide a recap. So what we would do basically each and every day is first, make sure that we're running the dailies. And then second is by running the normal barter, which is to increase your barter count um, to 5,111 and also going forwards to unlock more routes and then going the barter material refresh so that you could get most of your character mats and then after that one you know you just store it in Portiferia to make sure that you know you could keep track of your process on house 1-4 second floor and that's basically you know like what you would rinse and repeat like each and every day um, you know, gathering materials, 
I'm trading them for T1s up to T5s and then, you know, selling the excess T5s, you know, maintaining one, two, four, and then like, you know, eventually increasing depending on your storage and selling off the excess and then trading also for coins so that you would have, um, you know, extra coins to get your, you know, Kafras, Krons, memory fragments, if you wish so. And also, if you just want to focus on getting the materials, then you can use that one towards that too. So what we would be essentially doing now is just getting the materials so we can build the blue Galeas gear. And we're currently equipping the green gear, which will be helpful. And then we're going to be going over all of the other mats that are needed, which are, you know, easy to get once you get the 5,111 trade, which is the brilliant mats. And then also, you know, the tier of the oceans that we're slowly accumulating to the daily quest. So on the next video, we're going to be focusing more on, you know, getting the Karak and then also some of the tips and tricks that, you know, would help us along the way. And also some kind of a breakdown on what to barter and also, you know, how to make more money doing this life skill. And with all that, I hope and I really hope that this video has helped someone and I'll see you guys on part three next time.